Hi everyone, my name is Connor O'Day and thank you for stopping by to see my poster here for SPSP. I want to give a big shout out to all of the folks at SPSP for putting this together despite all of the craziness in the world. I really appreciate all of your efforts. I also want to give a big shout out to one of my previous students who is an author on this poster, Valentina Garcia, who worked really hard to help design this project and also received a student research grant to fund this project. Additionally, I want to give a shout out to my collaborator, Ashby Plant at Florida State University. So thank you to the two of you as well as Union College's student research grant folks. With that, I'm very excited to share with you my recent research on understanding people's motivations to confront racial prejudice. Now when it comes to prejudice confrontation, it's oftentimes very, very hard to choose to engage in this confrontation. As previous research has shown, it's, often, it's oftentimes costly, both to the confronter and the person being confronted. Because if you confront someone, they oftentimes get defensive, they get upset, they get mad with you, and as a result, they might not like you in the future, and that comes at a social cost. Now, one thing that has sort of shifted and we've started to realize in the last few years is prejudice confrontation has become a popular thing to do. And on one hand, that is fantastic because people who have always wanted to confront prejudice are now doing it at a higher rate. Now, that being said, there are also a lot of people that we think are just jumping on the bandwagon here, where these people are just confronting prejudice because they know it'll make them look good. And we've actually divided this out into two main motivations. And you can see the, the scale that we've created here is at the center of my poster. And we've measured people's internal motivations to confront and external motivations to confront. So the study that I'm presenting today is kind of the first study in this line of research wanting to validate the scale and confirm the factor structure of our items. Now consistent with our hypotheses, we did find great support for a three-factor scale here measuring internal motivations to confront, external motivations to look good, and external motivations to avoid looking bad. I'm going to start over here in my results with internal motivations to confront prejudice. Now this is what we think is going to be the right motivation, right? People are doing this for a good reason. And this was very strongly correlated with a lack of racism. With, negative, with less pre racial prejudice attitudes, less, less authoritarianism, less social dominance orientation, very strongly positively related with anti-prejudice motivations, very strongly correlated with internal motivations to suppress prejudice, and it had less of an effect with need to belong. It was actually negatively correlated with external motivations to suppress prejudice. On the other hand, we've measured people's external motivations to either gain social approval or avoid disapproval. And this is what we're kind of conceptualizing as the wrong motivations to confront prejudice. And as you can see, it's not even really related to racism. I mean, we have some slight negative relationships, so small to moderate correlations with r levels of racism is uncorrelated with authoritarianism, uncorrelated with social dominance, and it is strongly correlated with external motivations to suppress prejudice and moderately correlated with anti-prejudice and need to belong for both of those types of external motivations. And the key takeaways here is actually what's really interesting about this work is we're starting to show, and this is fairly preliminary at this point, is we're starting to show that people who are internally motivated, these are the people going out of their way to instill positive social change who are actually confronting when given the opportunity, and not just confronting, but doing it effectively so that they can actually instill positive social change. We think that those externally motivated won't know exactly when to confront, might over-confront, might under-confront, and will confront in ways that just make them look good without actually getting people to change their minds and be anti-racist. 